Now, what may be the most remarkable coming out event we've ever seen. A little girl is unable to speak a word or connect to the world around her in any way. Or so everyone thought, until she turned 11 and suddenly something remarkable happened. ABC's John McKenzie has the story of a girl breaking out of her own body. You don't know what it feels like to be me. When you can't sit still because your legs feel like they're on fire, or it feels like a hundred ants are crawling up your arms. How is it that these powerful words came out of this flailing body? People look at me and assume I am dumb because I can't talk. Something extraordinary happened to this 14-year-old who was written off as mentally deficient. Something that may help unlock the mysteries of a baffling disorder. What do I want? I want to be like every other kid. But I can't because I am Carly. Born in Toronto, Canada, Carly Fleischman was two years old when it became clear she was not keeping up with her twin sister, Tara. When you're told your child is going to be developmentally delayed, that they might achieve uh, the developmental level of a six-year-old, it's like being kicked in the gut. When Arthur Fleischman and his wife, Tammy, learned the diagnosis was autism, they expected the worst, that the twins were headed in different directions. And how bad did it get for Carly, those first few years? Awful. Um, part of her delays uh, prevented her from walking, from sitting up. It was clear that Carly, like most autistic children, was lost in her own world, perpetually swimming underwater. And all the doctors would say, you're the parent. You should do as much as you feel you need to do for this kid. Carly, stand up. The Fleischmanns were on their own. Experts told them that early intervention was critical. You use your fork. So ever since Carly was three, her therapy has been intensive, unrelenting. This took about 40 to 60 hours a week of one-to-one -one therapy. She always had about three to four therapists working with her. And if you're not getting results with one approach, you move on and you try something else. You didn't give up. You pushed Carly. And when you look in Carly's eyes, you can see an innate intelligence. So we never gave up. We never gave up. But if there was intelligence, Carly's ceaseless rocking, flailing arms, and tantrums hid any tracing. Worse, she couldn't speak, not a word. I did not have any expectation that she would have a fluent form of communication. Dr. Nicole Walton Allen is a clinical psychologist who led Carly's therapy program. Her profile was that of a child who was severely autistic and more than likely moderately mentally retarded. And did you ever think about institutionalizing her? We had friends saying, you know, you've been plugging away, spending thousands of dollars on therapy. You're not really seeing the progress. So, of course, you start thinking about, should she be in a group home? But you decided against this. I could never do it. I could never do it. How can you give up your kid? Despite thousands of hours of therapy over months and years, Carly's progress was excruciatingly slow. That is until one day three years ago when Carly was 11. She ran to a computer for the first time and what happened next was a breakthrough so profound it would finally pierce Carly's silent secret world. And she was quite distressed and she starts to spell H-U-R and it was like T, hurt. And then a little bit later on she spells H-E-L and we kind of pushed her to finish and she puts P so she spells help. Afterwards, she sort of got up, went behind the couch, and she threw up. Barbara Fenton Nash is one of Carly's longtime therapists. So what did this tell you? It told us that there was a lot more going on there than we knew. And to us, that was a breakthrough moment because we hadn't specifically taught her the words. And at first, we didn't believe it. Knowing this child for 10 years and never seeing her write a thing, of course you're going to be skeptical. Everyone was, including her other therapists, who were now desperate to see proof. But Carly refused to type, exhibiting the same hysterical behavior that led experts to label her as mentally retarded. She would strip off her clothes. She would go into the bathroom and she would engage in fecal smearing. So the typing was great, but no one could see it. What was needed was some tough love. If Carly wanted something, she would have to type for it. First type, and then you get. Let's go. Oh, she had to work for it. If she wanted information, if she wanted to go somewhere, she had to type by herself. Finally, several months later, Carly began to type for others. 
she started to realize that by communicating, she had power over her environment. And what came through her finger, typing one letter at a time, with fluency no one could believe, was astonishing. I am autistic, but that's not who I am. Take time to know me before you judge me. I am cute, funny, and like to have fun. Through her torrent of words, Carly began to unravel the mysteries behind her often wild behavior. <laughs> like banging her head. Because if I don't, it feels like my body is going to explode. It's just like when you shake a can of Coke. If I could stop it, I would, but it's not like turning a switch off. I know what is right and wrong, but it's like I have a fight with my brain over it. Use your words. And Carly was not shy about expressing her desires and frustrations. I want to be able to go to school with normal kids, but not have them getting upset or scared if I hit a table or scream. I want something that will put out the fire. We were also uh, horrified because for years we had spoken in front of her as if she wasn't there. Now, for the first time, Carly was able to have conversations with her parents. You think you can write back to Dad? Mm -hmm. I want to go on a snowmobile. Can we do it? Will you go on one? I think it would be fun. So here's your daughter, and finally you get to meet her. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Um, overwhelming. <laughs> overwhelming. I stopped looking at her as a disabled person. You promised. Did you lie to me? And started looking at her as a sort of sassy, mischievous teenage girl. With. I want people to know that no one is telling me what to say. And I don't have a hand up my butt like a puppet. Carly has been very clear that she sees herself as a normal child, locked in a body that does things that she has no control over. Side by side with her twin sister, Taryn, it would be easy to dismiss Carly as intellectually challenged. That is, until you ask her a question. Carly, why do autistic kids cover their ears, flap their hands, hum, and rock? It's a way for us to drown out all sensory input that overloads us all at once. We create output to block out input. Carly's brain, unlike most people's, is overwhelmed by the senses of sight and sound, taste and smell. Our brains are wired differently. We take in many sounds and conversations at once. I take over a thousand pictures of a person's face when I look at them. That's why we have a hard time looking at people. The one thing she can control is when and where she'll type. Oh, this is John. This is John. And usually she needs to be motivated. Finish up. You're doing great. When I tried making conversation with Carly, uh -huh. she would not type back. I'll tell you anything you want to know. Her finger hovering over the keys for hours until I brought up my teenage son. He wants to play football. No, she's smiling. It's going to be something funny. <laughs> Are you embarrassed? <laughs> Come on. We want to hear what you have to say. Yeah. Yes, I guess he's cute. You know, two years that we've been communicating, and every time she writes something, there's a little bit of that sense of awe. The room resembled a ship's cabin. Its walls Dear Dad, wooden I love when you read to me, and I love that you believe in me. I know I'm not the easiest kid in the world. Give me a kiss. However, you are always there for me, holding my hand and picking me up. I love you. Okay. I'll go through many sleepless nights to hear that. I'll spend every penny we have to hear that. Was there one writing in particular that left a lump in your throat? In this writing where she says, you've never been in my body, I wish for one day you could be in my body. <sighs> a year after we first met Carly, she is happier, calmer, more independent. Come on, let's get this in the pan. She's even writing a novel. I think that humankind is just oblivious to things that have been around for many years. She also has her own internet blog and Twitters regularly, answering questions from people all over North America. I think Carly knows that she now has a voice that can help other kids. Now she looks at herself as someone who can make a mark on the world. And that's got to be life-changing. What do you hope for Carly now? I want her to be happy. I want her to have dreams and goals and accomplish those goals in spite of her challenges. I think the only thing I can say is don't give up. Your inner voice will find its way out. Mine did. <laughs>